Hi, you're watching Alex Lab channel and this is the sixth part of the season for composite materials and today I want to combine all technologies which I mentioned in our previous five videos and show how to make light and strong composite parts of my own design. With the help of 3D editor and 3D printer we will create the exact detail and using the results of all previous studies achieve the best combination of weight, strength and lightness. And the main advantage, this technology will allow to make composite parts without a mold at all. All books, PDF guides, drawings and 3D models are available for channel members, so let's begin! In one of the previous videos on the example of the Iron Man mask, we analyzed the technology of manufacturing a carbon part in a 3D printed mold. This technology makes it possible to quickly and cheaply produce durable and almost weightless details, but when scaling production, have several problems. First, for each part you need to print a rather big mold for laminating, which becomes critical if you need to make a lot of different parts in a single copy or in a small series. Second problem, high-quality laminating in molds is very demanding on the components. To create a high-quality and smooth surface of the part, Fabric with a specific weave is needed, expensive separating layer which also doesn't always work and is hard to find, an epoxy resin of a very specific consistency, and vacuum compressor, bags and connections. The need for hard to find components makes technology more complex and expensive. The third and most important problem, even if all necessary components are present, laminating technology in a mold eats up of the details, for example, it doesn't allow to obtain parts with sharp corners and slip edges, which is necessary for any body of machines. Is it possible using the same tools and method solve all this problem and speed up the creation of composite parts? It turns out that most of problems associated with the very fact of separating the mold from the part and all defects associated with it. And here is what seems to me the best solution at the moment. Just like before, we use the 3D modeling and 3D printing to create a detail. This is a simple, cheap and affordable way and most importantly, it allows you to quickly create complex geometry with high accuracy. But instead of modeling a mold for laminating part, I want to 3D model and 3D print thinnest, lightweight matrix which itself will become the basis of the composite part and which will not need to be separated from the composite. How well will this method will cope with all problems described, we will now see, so let's move on the technology itself. To edit the detail, it is better to use the original mesh object. But if there is no source and there is only an STL file that cannot be edited, then the mesh of the front wall can be easily modeled by STL model using retopology. This is the method I described in the first part when modeling a body on a 3D scan. After the front part is modeled, you need to set the thickness. The thickness of the need is as small as possible, but so that doesn't break when printed, because this will be the maximum load on it during the manufacturing process. Extrude the thickness or add a modifier to set the wall thickness. For example, for a mask, I set the thickness to 3 layers with a nozzle of 0.4 mm, this is the thickness of 1.2 mm. For smaller parts, 2 or 1 layer can be enough. Position the part in a slicer, set 100% infill and send it to print. Printers are best suited for printing such parts in which the table doesn't move along the X and Y axis but only down the Z axis. To print the matrix, it is better to use PLA or ABS plastic and do not use PTG, which creates print defects on the upper layers of high parts due to deformation during printing. Immediately after printing, we get the matrix which dimensions accurate to a tenth of millimeter high detail and minimal weight. Carefully handle minor print defects on the edges with a soldering iron if it needed and then with light pressure process the part with 400 sandpaper. Degrease the part with a solvent and cover the front side with a thin layer of structural epoxy resin. This layer is needed in order to provide parts with sufficient rigidity for further processing. And if there is a task to minimize the weight, then this layer will be the outer finish coat. If there is a need to apply another layer to provide a greater margin of thickness for subsequent grinding, then the ideal moment for this is after 2 and 3 hours when the first layer has already set but is still sticky. 
In this case, the layers will stick together chemically, they will be stronger and will not create a visible interlayer film. Post-processing of the part is divided into two directions. On the inside, the part is reinforced with composites to achieve the required strength. From the outside, a coating is created to ensure sufficient hardness and wear resistance. Two previous videos are devoted to strength and hardness. Looking at them, you can determine type of composite, number of layers and select coating which are suitable for your projects. After complete polymerization of the outer layer and easy processing of the edges, we pass to strengthening and increasing the strength. Reinforcing material depends on required strength, weight and budget and how to choose it is described in detail in the part about strength. Mark the material according to the part of the template and cut enough sheet of fabric. In this case, this is structural fiberglass, but with higher requirements for the ratio of weight and strength, it is better to use Kevlar or carbon. Fix the part for convenient lamination. In this case, I am using an old printed mold for laminating, but not because it is necessary, just because it was at hand and perfect for it. Obviously, the form can be fixed in any other way, such as plasticine, for example. Degree the surface with a solvent. Mix structural epoxy resin with hardener and start laminating. With a brush, apply a thin uniform layer of the composition, checking in the light at the no uncoated areas on the part. Gently lay the first layer of fabric from the center to edges, pressing it against the mold so that the resin soaks the fabric. The cloth fits much easier than in the case of the mold because there is no release agent that slips and interferes with working. Then we apply a second layer of the resin and in the same way lay the rest of the sheets paying particular attention to the corners. To prevent resin from dripping towards in the center of the concave part and get a smooth matte inner surface, cover the part with a nylon peel ply. For denser and more durable lamination, vacuum bags can be used or cover the part with a food film and press plasticine on top, packs of water or sand to create an even pressure over the entire area. After complete polymerization of the resin, cut off excess material after covering the edges of the fabric with masking tape. This will help reduce garbage and make cutting easier. For cutting long straight lines, it is better to use large cutting discs and make small grooves and slots with a disc of smaller diameter. After trimming, we get a part with the required strength and proceed to the processing of the front side. First, level the surface with an eccentric grinder and discs with grid 400 then we proceed to the manual leveling with a bar with the same abrasives. When processing a part, we keep in mind the general geometry of the part and take in account which planes should smoothly transition one into another and which surfaces form sharp edges. The subsequent processing of the front side depends on the specific type of coverage you wish to create. It can be the coating described in the video about hardness or any other coverage of your choice. Pay attention to the most economical and elegant option. If you initially select the plastic of the desired color for the matrix, then after leveling the epoxy layer, grinding and polishing, the part will have a finished, smooth, glossy without any painting. And if at the same time composite reinforcement on the inside made of carbon fiber, you will get the best ratio of weight, strength and detail that can be achieved using this technology. Since my field is protective suits and machine parts, then the task of the outer layer of my details is ensure maximum hardness and wear resistance. Hardness tests have shown that the desired hardness give epoxy resin and as more expensive option, giving greater resistance to chips and dents, resin reinforcement with carbon fiber. Summing up, what advantages technology gives us production of composite parts without a mold for laminating? The first is plastic savings. Even with optimal print settings, complete absence of support parts and 5% fill factor, it takes 3.5 times more plastic to print the mold, 
which after production must be thrown away as opposite to the matrix, which becomes the part of the final detail. This way we don't throw away plastic at all. Obviously printing time and power consumption is also reduced, which becomes critical with an increase in production. For example, for the same part, the mold for laminating is printing for 22 hours and the matrix for 8 hours only. The second is affordable and simple components. For the manufacture of the same part, mold technology requires more components that are difficult to access, such as quality release bags, resins with a certain viscosity and fabric of certain weave. In the case of matrix moldless technology, we can use the simplest and most ready available materials because the recess from the mold is no more needed. The third and most important advantage, this is the quality of the front surface and high detail. In the mold technology, the front layer of the part is formed at a secondary cast from the form and even when selecting the best components, losses, some of the details and the corners and edges are quite smooth. In a new moldless technology, the front layer is formed not by the imprint from the mold, but the primary part printed on a 3D printer and saves maximum detail and sharpness of the edges and corners. For the same reason, it is possible to manufacture parts with more complex geometry, high detail and deep undercuts, which in principle couldn't be pulled out of the mold. The only downside, this is a slight increase in the weight of the final part equal to the weight of the matrix. This can be critical in the manufacture of drone parts and machines beyond small aircraft, where the battle is for every gram of weight. When it comes to detail like car and motorcycle bodies, protective equipment, prosthesis and any other details with a complex geometry to be produced in small batches or in a single copy according to the individual measurements, then moldless technology is many times cheaper, simpler and faster than lamination in a mold. If you have technical questions on the topic of this video, ask them in the comments and check my pinned comment for the answers. Also watch previous videos on composites on this channel and perhaps the answers to your questions are there. Thank you for watching and thank you very much to the sponsors of Alex Lab channel and for your support. I would like to say see you in the next week, but I think I need more time to model all the details of the costume and uh, with the help of technologies that I described in these six videos, make a light and durable protective suit for electric transport. Please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click the bell and turn on notifications uh, so you don't miss the next video. So, see you soon and good luck with your own projects.